start with announcements today. And uh, Bill, there should be a slide or vi or that we'll put up there. I wanted to explain that a little bit. We have uh, Luke is over here to the far right. If you remember, Luke was playing music for us. And he's now at a Lutheran church in uh, Myrtle Beach, North South Carolina. And he was talking to me because I was raised Lutheran. He said, now, Darrell, what what's this Lutheran stuff going to be like? I said, you're going to really like it because you don't have to go to the um, dry cleaner so much because you get to wear a robe. <laughs> so he's, uh, they have welcomed him really wonderfully welcomed him. They had a cake uh, to welcome him. They've had a, a place for him to live, a car for him to use, and a golf cart to go to the beach. Now, you can't get much better than that. I asked him how old, you know, am I too old to be the youth minister there also? But it's just uh, wonderful when I see a church step up and, and be so welcoming. And um, that's how we feel here. We feel we really have an opportunity to be welcoming as well. Down our, our list, we have Rex Cox. He's one of our security guys up at the track, and he got kicked by a horse, not a horse from here, one of his own personal horses. And we want to be praying for him. He got pretty banged up. We have uh, Glen Glenda Godwin, and uh, Glenda is doing much better. We She's have Glenna Lambert on here, too. you got a test coming up, Glenda. You got... Yeah, you have that results coming back, and we were praying that it's going to be, you know, your CT stamp, scan. So we're praying that that'll just be uh, on the praise side of our report next week. So um, Bill Dilley works up at the um, grandstands as well. He has some health issues. Penny Chilton, you may know Penny. She preaches for me sometimes. She, she has mono and has to be quarantined for a month. Sue Harvey, praying for you, Sue, just with the different things. Crystal Romero, she's one of our young kids, teenagers, so we want to pray for her upcoming surgery. I got a text this morning from Johnny Trotter, and he wants us to be praying for Jana's mom. She's taking a real turn, um, struggling with some health issues. And Jackie Winters is um, has been his secretary for probably, I, I can't even guess, 30 years. She's been with him, and she has cancer, and uh, we just want to lift her up as well. Over on uh, birthdays and anniversaries, Darlene Hart, she's our works in the silks room here at the track, and in, right now she's in Sunland Park. Uh, Danny Godwin, 54 years old. Wow. And Chris Miles, we want to lift uh, all three of them on birthdays. The big news. Noon to noon fast. Anybody try it? Good. We're going to do it each week until Easter. So it'll be again this week. Eat lunch Wednesday. Fast until lunch on Thursday. And we will get together and pray here if you would like on Thursday for lunch or, or however you want to do your fast. But lots of prayer. We also, the ladies conference starts this Friday. And how many is your total? I'm not sure, but we have over 30. Isn't that amazing? From this small congregation. That pretty impressed. Yep. It's uh, a good, it'll be a good turnout for our ladies. Men's prayer breakfast will be that morning, uh, the, uh, the Saturday, this Saturday. So the ladies will be over at the conference, and the guys, we're going to have food here and prayer breakfast. So come to the prayer breakfast at 8 o'clock this, this Saturday. Flying Jay Wranglers will be singing next week for the service. And James Hobbs was here this morning, and he's looking forward to it. And so is uh, the rest of the group. So with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you that you're doing so much. You have so many opportunities when we are just faithful and obedient. And I pray for each person in this room. I pray for our little chapel here that the ladies going to the conference will receive from you that they'll be uh, um, just motivated to do ministry more and more. I thank you for each and every person that also that you will just strengthen our inner being, Lord. Give us the desire 
to follow your ways in everything that we do. I pray the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's stand up for at least this first song. Nola, I want you to sing really loud because this is for you, honey. like losing your gas. All right, who is glad to be here in the presence of the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. That was a good response. It is wonderful. Okay, I think I'm back up. Let's see. Amen. There we go. Yay. You want them to sit? Okay, you can sit.
shining as the sun we've no less days to see your praise than when we first begun thank you God for all that you do for us, for bringing the weather that has been such a crazy pattern, but we know we need the moisture and the sun. Thank you for sending your precious son to die for our sins and for raising him again so that we can have hope and assurance. And thank you for making our end times going to be wonderful when we're with you in heaven and we'll be able to sing with you forever and ever. Amen. Mason, stand up a sec. It's Mason's birthday, too. How old are you? 16. All right. Happy birthday. We got donuts for you. <laughs> We've been on a journey of the last five weeks speaking about the different disciplines of the church. And I'm going to finish up and follow up this last one. This is fellowship. Fellowship is a discipline that's necessary for the church to function and to function well. We have to have good fellowship. If you remember, I started out with Bible study, and so this is like bookends. If you look at everything we've talked about with the prayer, with the fasting, the things that are bringing us closer together, those are bookends. Fellowship. We need it. There was an old monastery, and it had fallen into hard times, and it was down to five monks in the realm. They were all in their 70s. They used to have great influence, but now it had dwindled. And they had heard of a, an old hermit that was said to be able to, it was prophetic. And they thought, we'll go and ask him. So these five monks ventured to that cave and talked to this hermit. And the hermit said, one of you is a mighty, special apostle of God. Well, when they left there, they kept thinking, well, which one of us? Which one? And in doing so, thinking about that, they thought, maybe it's this brother or this brother. Well, it got them showing great respect for each other. 
not knowing which one it would be. And that ex extraordinary respect played out. And it played out to the community around them as they began. The monastery was a place people would bring their families to have picnics. And they began to notice the unity that was happening between these five monks. And it started a movement throughout the community, throughout that realm. And it grew. Pretty soon, young men were coming and asking these old monks, how do I join the order? How do I be a part? And it grew once more to be a great monastery. And it all started by showing that respect to one another. And that old hermit, just a wise guy, a wise man, he gave them wise advice. Look to one another as greater than yourself. Isn't that what scripture says? When you do that, when you show that kind of respect, it goes a long way in how people view you, how they grew, view what you're a part of. And that basic discipline of fellowship begins to blossom when we have that respect for one another. It's a grace-driven church for a grace-needing world. That's what we want. That's what God wants for us. God wants that for all churches, to relate to one another. And that's a litmus test for what God wants us to do. In John 13, 34 through 35, it says, A new command I give you, love one another in the same way that I have loved you. By this all men will know that you are my disciples. Without saying a word, they can see by the way you live. Without saying a word, they can see by the way you love. And they will know whose you are. And it will give you that opportunity to share your faith, to, to open up about how you can love in such a way. Potluck fellowships, that's one good way to fellowship. It really is. I'm all for them, especially des the desserts. Such a variety. But we're going to go through and we're going to talk about Acts 2.42. And if you've looked and if you've been part of the sermons over the last five weeks, you'll hear exactly what was written in Acts 2.42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, that's the word of God, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everything we've talked about, folks, is bringing us to that point of being that type of church, an Acts church. And when you, when you fulfill these things, when you're doing these things, you're going to have the opportunity to be a shining light in the community around you as a church and as a person. And it starts out with the thir first thing on the back of your bulletin. It has the outline. But it's, a, it's that emphasis on spiritual growth. That's what those foundations do. When you learn to pray, when you learn to study Scripture, all those things bring you to a point to where you can understand exactly what God wants. You can understand His will through His Word. You can understand your faults as you're around people that, that want you to shine. And they'll move you along and encourage you. That's what a church fellowship is like. It encourages each other to maturity, spiritual maturity. Infants in the faith, we're all at different levels. There's adolescence. There's mature Christians within a, any church. And we become a mothering community to where we don't look down upon those that are fresh in the faith and are making mistakes or to those that are mature in the faith and making mistakes. And my phone is on, and that's a beer bottle can. I wonder if I can change that, because it's going to keep doing that. I'll just keep going. If you hear that, don't get thirsty. <laughs> I, I don't know why I picked that one, but someone trying to get a hold of me. Speed it up, Daryl. But that mothering community, it admonishes one another. And that's a tough word, but it, it's when you love that much, when you can go to someone and they know that it's coming from your heart and you can bring some correction into your life that, that you've learned through lessons in your life without condemning, that's how you mother in a community. 
in a church. You can care for one another. We show great care here for those within the ministry. We encourage one another, just like the ladies going to this Bible study. We submit to one another. There's times that my ideas, they're just not, they're not going to work. And I need those type of people that will come up and say, Daryl, there's a better way. And I need to submit to that and not think my way is the only way. I could. <laughs> I got to cue her up sometimes. <laughs> but we need to help each other grow to our full potential. There's so much potential in this room, just like those monks, when they were given that charge to say, one of you is a great apostle of God, and they begin to, to look that way, think that way, to treat each other that way. And I see that in here. I see a loving group of people, a caring group of people, a giving group of people that want to reach out, that want to make a difference in our community and, and the kingdom of Christ. Ephesians 4, 15, and 16 says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined together held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each does its part. You have a part. We each have a part. And as we function the way God wants us to function, we're hitting on all cylinders. No one's slipping through the cracks because we're all looking to be a help to those around us. Mountain goats. Did you know they're their offspring, they're called kids, and they act just like kids. They bounce around, and they're on steep terrain, very steep terrain, and they're jumping around, and any misstep could mean the end of them. And so what they do, the nannies, that's what the, the mothers are called, nannies, they get on the downside of the slope of those kids, so if they do fall, they can stop that fall. Isn't that a great illustration of how the church should act and respond to those that are like kids, to those that are kids, that we're there to protect, to guide, to keep safe? That's, that's a great description of how the church should be. Because we all stumble and fall on occasion. We need those that will support us and be there to help us to not just learn from mistakes, to learn from others' experiences as they share. Growth by addition, that's one way that the church functions, but it's also by nutrition. It's what you're being fed. Robert Rain says the church is both evangelistic and educator, both obstetrician and pediatrician helping deliver the newly born in Christ and nurturing them from infancy to maturity in Christ. Both. Hebrews kind of goes along that way. It said in 1025, let us think of one another and how we can stimulate one another's growth in loving and doing deeds. Stimulate each other in growth. Encourage each other in growth. We have a wonderful Bible study that's going on Tuesday. And it's just a great time of fellowship, but it's spurring one another along in growth as we share each other's experiences. When we look at it's a Bible study on kingdom. It's called The Kingdom Man by Tony Evans. And it's just a real challenge when you hear what he has to say when you read the book and, and you bring in your own experiences and you grow together. That's fulfilling, that first thing there. Second, it's a place of gladness. Speaking of Lutheran churches, and I, since I'm one, I can kind of pick on them a little bit. I've never thought of it as a glad place. You know, when I'd go to church, you had to kind of know what was going on. So you had to know when to say what and, and along those lines. It was, um, it was more the dirge type music. It wasn't that uplifting. The preacher, sometimes he'd get up there and, and it would be... Uh, kind of a booming voice, but I was younger, and that's what I encouraged Luke. I said, it's all up to the pastor. 
of every church. It's up to the pastor of how you're fed and, and what's going on in, within that church. But it should be a place of gladness. And in Psalm 122.1, it says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Do you remember growing up? Did, were you glad when your mom got you up and said it's time for church? I don't see too many hands going up. <laughs> should be a place of gladness. These two twins that you see running around, they look forward to coming over here to come to, to Sunday school. And that's the way we want it to be. We want kids to want to come to church, to learn, to do a little craft, but during that craft to learn something about Christ, to make it a place of joy, seeing the, the best in people, not the worst, to build each other up, not to tear each other down. It's a very depressing world, and we need to bring light into this depressed world. We need to show them that life is worth living. Life is worth caring. Life is worth loving. The rewards are great. John 17, 20 says, this is Jesus' prayer. It's a great prayer. The last, before he went to the cross, and he prayed for us as well as the people around him at that time. He said, I pray for these followers, speaking of those in front, but I'm also praying for all those who will believe in me because of their teaching. So he's praying down the road, all the way to us and the future generations. Father, I pray that they can be one as you and I, as you are in me and I am in you. I pray that they can also be one in us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. Isn't that a, an interesting prayer? You know, he didn't say, because I'm going to make sure that everybody sees what goes on in me, that they'll know. No, he said, in them, in us. That's the way the world is going to know who Christ is. It's through each one of us. That unity, love flows from that unity. He prayed that we would have that kind of fellowship. Symbola says, in fresh wind and fresh fire, I charge you as pastor of this church that if you ever hear another member speak an unkind word of criticism or slander against anyone, myself, another pastor, an usher, a choir member, or anyone else, you have the authority to stop that person in mid-sentence and say, excuse me, who hurt you? Who ignored you or who slighted you? Was it our pastor, Symbola? Let us go to his office right now. You see, he saw in his book when he wrote that, in his church, he saw the importance of maintaining unity to such a degree that he wanted no talking behind someone's back, no putting anyone down. He wanted that unity to be protected. And we need to be the same. We need to protect the unity within our church. The fourth thing is it's got to be a place of grace. Acts 4.33, back to the verse, it says, With great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. Now I know I can get a raise of hands. Who's felt the presence and the grace of God? Who can look around and see what God has done in your life and say, oh, God, you've so, shown me so much grace. You've imparted so much love into my life. And that grace undeserved you've shown me. That's the foothold. When we have the gospel of Christ going out before us, grace is our standing point. Keith Miller says the neighborhood bar is possibly the best counterfeit. Maybe that's why I had the beer can thing going there. There is to fellowship in Christ. It's the fellowship he wants the church to have. I think this is up here, so I'll read it. It's an imitation, dispensing liquor instead of grace, escape rather than reality. It's permissive, accepting, inclusive fellowship. It is unshockable. 
You can tell people secrets and they usually don't tell others or even want to. You see, the church should be a place that people can come and be comfortable and feel that they're being nurtured, to feel that it's a safe place for them to share with those they trust and love, to go through issues in their life and know that that care is available. It doesn't have to be the neighborhood bar. Many turn to it. But God wants us to be a place where people turn to the church. Everybody thirsts for grace. 1 Peter 4.10 says each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. There was an amazing concert. It was a rock concert at Wembley Stadium in London. For 12 hours, different rock groups had gotten up. The crowd was in a frenzy. It was crazy. And up stood Jesse Norman to sing. The crowd was restless, but she started out with the same song that Melanie sang earlier, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. 70,000 fans who couldn't be quieted earlier fell silent, listening to those words. A powerful thirst in this world. The world thirsts for grace. The church in Jerusalem that we've read about healthy fellowship. It was seen in their growth, in their gladness, rooted in unity, and in their grace. As I pray, we're going to have communion. Beto, if you'd come forward, we'll serve communion. I'll give the instructions. We're going to just start on the left. You come and take the elements and take it back to where you're seated, and we'll partake together. It's uh, bread and grape juice. And use that time to reflect upon what God has done in your life, the grace that he's shown you, and what he wants, how he wants you to blossom, and how he wants his church to blossom in unity. As Christ was before his disciples sitting at that table, he first picked up that loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then he took that cup, and as he As he was going to partake of that cup, he said, This is my blood shed for you for the remission of your sins. In both things, Christ was pointing. He was pointing to himself and the sacrifice that he'd make, but he was pointing to the fact that when we do this, we remember him. And it's one of the anchors of unity when we partake together knowing of the grace that he has shed for us. As Melanie plays, we'll, we'll have communion and you'd start with this side.
I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence, you've never failed. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you've never failed me yet. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you've never failed me yet. I know the won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence, you've never failed. Your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence, you've never failed me. Scripture tells us that his body broken is for our healing, both physically, spiritually. So as we partake of this, if there's a struggle in your life, if there's an illness in your life, I pray the Lord will touch you specially. Let's partake. In the cup, his blood washes as white as snow. I remember at the ski area, a young man gave his life to Christ at the top of chair three because of communion. He said he wanted to be washed white as snow. Christ promises that through this. 
Let's take partake. He'll make you white as snow. Let's pray. Father, we have things in our life. We have illness. We have disease in this world. And Lord, you gave yourself to redeem us from that. And to redeem us from our sin, Lord. To pay the penalty. All these things are represented by what we just did. Remembering you. I pray as we go forth from here that we will be known and we will know. Go with us. We want to be a people of grace. I pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.